but that unhappiness, was, there a, was there a risk to, to that could affect the rest of the squad? Is that the reason why you as a club, when players are unhappy, you no. let them go? He want to play every single game and uh, hopefully he can happen in Munich. Is the left back position weaker without him now or do you have enough there? Listen, if Bayern Munich wants you how or we want it, it's because he's beyond exceptional player. So I'm not going to say one bad word about him. Uh, I think he's a work ethic and uh, his love for the football and his passion to play football and his quality and skills. What can I say? Everybody, everybody knows it. So, um, but it happened one or two days before the transfer window. I'm really, really pleased. Like always, I've been with the squad I have and and being not sure what we have to do is better have. The, the money in the bank and, uh, and, and don't be criticised to spend more. Is it a case of, you know, would you rather be lighter in one position than have players who you could select but we can, aren't happy we can, to be We here. can handle the situation what we have in all departments this season. I trust a lot with the players that we have, a lot, a lot. So if he didn't have feeling, I would, would say to the to, to my bosses to say, oh, I think we should do this. When I, Manu Akanji happened, so the last year of the transfer window, I said, I had the feeling that we need cent another central defender for that reason. <coughs> Nathan was injured in that time. Ruben was injured before it happened. And John was always, you know, so I had the feeling as a defender, you have this opportunity and we did it. In this case, it was completely different. When you agreed to let Cancelo go, did you have any conversations about going into the market to get someone else in? Yeah, we have. Um, yeah, we talk about that, but uh, it takes three minutes of discussion. So I said, "It's going well." So do you have something in perspective? I said to Chicken. I said, "No, we have to take a look. I don't know. Maybe." I said, "Okay, wait." So. Yeah, we could go make the market and pay a huge amount of money for one left bag. Yeah, maybe we could do it, but it's not the case. I prefer this four month and, and two or three weeks just in case to end of the season, we can we can do it without without a new new sign. Next season, summer, we'll see. And I guess Nathan Ake was already very, very important to you. He's kind of even more important now. But, you know, he's lost the body. Yeah, of back. course, but Nathan cannot play all the games, but we have Jaime can play there. Rico can play there. Uh, of course, Sergio can play there. So we have we have alternatives. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the United Stand. It's the big one. It's the Manchester Derby. It's Manchester United at Old Trafford against yes, Manchester City. That's the only team that works in a Manchester Derby, and. It's a massive game. I think we're all very, very much excited about this one. I hope, hope you are. Uh, I know a lot of people are, ner are nervous about it. There's, uh, there's talk of the team coming out. I think I know the team, but I'm going to digress for a moment and say that it's quite shocking um, in a way that we probably didn't expect. Um, Fred starting is, is, is nece necessary. I put that in my preview. I think we all agreed with that, so I don't think we can say that that's a shock. However, there is a shock. Um, there is no place for uh, Martinez and there is no place for Anthony, which, unless there is injury or fitness concerns, and with Martinez there may well be, I've got to say I'm really quite surprised. Um, Martinez is on the bench. Anthony is on the bench. Um, we've got three centre-backs on the bench, which just shows you about the squad imbalance that we've got. I mean, we're effectively playing a left-back at left centre-back in the Manchester derby in our biggest game of the season to bench Lindelof, Maguire and Martinez. I mean, Martinez may well have a, have a you know, it may well be uh, fitness issues, of course. Um, but the, the the surprise for me is that you look at that bench and you go, Harry Maguire cost £80 million, pounds, uh, Martinez cost uh, £45 million, pounds, Lindelof cost £30 million, pounds, and um, we've got uh, Luke Shaw playing at left centre-back. Now, I did say this during the week, that this might be the way that he goes because Ten Hag does what he wants to do. And maybe Ten Hag feels that... Um, we're not playing a back five. Um, m maybe he feels that, um, you know, Luke Shaw is the best left-sided centre-back he has at the moment for Manchester United. So 
Um, look, Ten Hag has picked the team. Um, also, uh, Ericsson moves to the number 10 position, I presume. Fred comes into the midfield with Casemiro. I think that's very intelligent. Um, I can't I can't really have any issue with that. I mean, I don't really have an issue with the team. My, 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 well, actually, I do. Mares against uh, Malasia terrifies me. I'll say that straight away. Mares against Malasia terrifies me. Um, Mares actually went in my combined Man United, Man City uh, combined 11. So I, I, I am worried about that, to be honest with you. But uh, that I, I think... I've done it again. Bloody hell, these hoodies. The Ronaldo one, and now this one. Um, no, but look, seriously, um, it's a Manchester derby. We can win this game. Of course we can, I'm confident. But uh, the team is a little bit is a little bit of a shock, I think, for everybody to digest. Um, I feel for Anthony. I do feel for Anthony. Um, I feel that um, it's, you know, um, slightly you know disconcerting that he's uh, he's not in there um but on the other hand martial starting is a risk only trained yesterday i i think to be honest it, it's the beauty of eric ten hag isn't it terry ten hag it's the it's the beauty of him in the sense that he's very hard to predict and that must be a nightmare for any oppos opposing manager in the, the sense that it's very hard to predict what team he's going to pick you know, the way that Ten Hag manages his team when he brings new signings in, he tends not to throw them straight into the deep end. So to throw Martial in after one training session, I'm surprised. There should be no way that Martial should play 90 minutes today. And therefore, I thought he would be on the bench. Sorry, I've just got my headphones tangled up here. This is really, I don't know whether you've got OCD like me, but it really is irritating me a lot. There we go. Um... Yeah, so, yeah, look, Martial starts, very, very good. Uh, very, very happy about that. But, um, you know, what, what what level of fitness does he have? Um, I, I don't know. So we'll have to wait and see uh, what happens with that. Um, one minute. Oh, dear. seems to be happening every game at the moment. Put the bloody lineups on the screen, please. How, how difficult can it be? Sorry about that. You know, I, I go live and then nothing's, you know, I'm not the producer. So I, I go live and it should be on the fucking screen and it's not there. Um, so the team is, I'll do it verbally again, even though we pay a lot of money to have it on the fucking screen. Pisses me right off. Um, so the team is David De Gea, wan Varan, Varane, Luke Shaw, um, Malasia, Casemiro, Fred and um, uh, Ericsson. And then Bruno on the right, Martial through the middle and Rashford on the left. There is no Ganacho on the bench. The bench, well, no, no Ganacho is on the bench. Heaton, Lindelof, Maguire, Martinez, Maynou, uh, McTominay, uh, McTominay um, and uh, Anthony Al Alanga, not Anthony Alanga, An Anthony the Brazilian, Alanga, and then Ganacho there. So that's how it's how, it, how it's looking for Manchester United. Um, okay, let me just uh, publish that. Publish that. And then we should have the team on the screen for you, which I've just put it put up there. Oh, come on. There it is. There's the Manchester United lineup for you, as you can see. So give us your thoughts in the chat. What are your thoughts? We've had a few super chats coming in. Bruno's going to be man of the match, says Druv. I've played the game. Score prediction, says Matthias. 1-0 Man United. Very interesting back four. Would have thought Shaw would play left back. Need extra legs in the midfield. Good that Fred is starting, says Vignesh. I agree with that. My concern is that Shaw normally gets pulled outside the middle when playing at centre-back. I don't think Malasia can handle Mares after what Saka did to him, says Jonathan. Uh, Massimo, thank you very much. Well, let's have a quick look at the Manchester City lineup because the Manchester City lineup looks like this. So, you've got... Um, I can't read that. I can't read that. Sorry. <laughs> I haven't got my glasses on. I can't, I can't read that, man. I'll have, to go to a, I'll have to go to the One Football app here. Uh, remember, you can download the One Football app for free. The link's in the description. They sponsor our Stats Carousel. Big shout out to One Football. Get all your latest breaking football news on there. 
Um, so let me have a look at the one football app here. Let's get it up. So the Manchester City lineup as is on the screen for you. Edison, Walker, Akanji, Aki, Cancelo. De Bruyne, Rodri and Bernardo Silva. Mares, Haaland, Foden. I've got to be honest, that front six is the front six I probably feared the most, if I'm completely honest. Um, I had hoped that Gundogan would start and either Bernardo Silva or Mares would be on the bench. Um, Gundogan's actually on the bench. Phillips, Grealish, Laporte, Alvarez, uh, Gomez, Palmer, Lewis. I mean, look, the interesting thing for Man City, and, is, and, and nobody talks about it, is that um, Manchester City don't have Diaz or Stones. You know, they're arguably their best two centre-backs. They don't have. Um, and not much is, 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 is said about it, really, uh, because it's just you just got to get on with it, haven't you? So, um, yeah, interesting. Um, very interesting to digest. And I'm just reading a lot of the chat here. And, you know, obviously there's a lot, um, lot of um, opinion in there. Um, if he had... I agree with Rag. You've got to trust Ten Hag. He is the manager. He's done a fantastic job so far. Um, 100%. Um, other than Bruno on the right, I totally agree with the lineup, says uh, Mateus. Well, we're not party to the um, the injury status of these players and the fitness levels of these players. For me, Martinez and Varane should be starting and Luke Shaw should be at left back. 100%. But I did mention it on Tuesday. Martinez hasn't played much since the World Cup. And I just wonder whether Ten Hag is happy with that or understanding of that or just very realistic about that. And what I mean by that is he's not really brought him back in as a starting centre-back for Manchester United since the World Cup. And I think maybe he's got fitness concerns about him. I mean, he did look a bit rusty on Tuesday. So maybe Ten Hag is like, if I put Martinez into a game like this and he's not at the level I need him to be, and Luke Shaw is, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I would suspect that's the reasoning behind it. Um, what I would say is, what's the fitness level of Lindelof? Because you could play Lindelof and Varane and still put Luke Shaw at left. But I do worry, and I'm going to say it right now, I think some people will be worried about wan at right back um, against Foden. I think wan is a good defensive right back. Malasia against uh, Mares worries me because I think Mares is a fantastic player. So that's, that's the only area. And the midfield, look, Man City's midfield is probably the best in Europe. I'd argue that anyway. I think I personally think Ten Hag is playing with Pep's head, says uh, Kasha. And Eric Ten Hag, masterstroke. We cannot blow for blow with City. The longer the game go goes on, I would favour United. We have impact from the bench, and it's important to get half time in the game, says Charlie. Charlie, where's the impact from the bench? It's about this game at all. I think we'll win one nil. I think the time is now. The time is now to deliver, and I think the players will know that. But I think with um, you look at that Manchester City front six. Well, you know, and I know, I know they're not playing all as attackers, but Rodri, Bernardo Silva and De Bruyne as a midfield three. I mean, I don't care what midfield we construct. That's tough. That's a tough game. You know, that the balance of that midfield three, I really wanted Gundogan to play because Bernardo Silva is a fantastic footballer. De Bruyne we know about. 